as a writer, I was trying to, I wouldn't say be neutral, okay, but I, I, also, I also showed the Christians doing the good stuff as well. Okay, so, you know, it was the, I showed them being the charitable people and caring for the sick and all that sort of stuff. So I think what I was trying to get was a sense of tolerance, you know, rather than, I mean, I, I have Celine being, not, not so religious, but, you know, spiritual or, you know, whatever. She's a Christian. She believes that Christ was her Savior and that's the reason why, you know, she's going to go to heaven. You know, that's, that's what she believed. But she was also looking outward and saying, I believe more in people's actions than their words. So, you know, if you're out there helping the sick and the poor and the whatever, whether you're you know, a Christian or a pagan or an atheist, you know, you're my sister. The other part was probably the church versus state theme, which is, which is a major theme in the book, because what's happening is that this is the time when, the, like I said, the Catholic Church was consolidating and taking its place on the political landscape. And they were usurping a lot of what we think of as state powers. They ran their own courts. You know, they they uh, were basically saying to their, to their congregations, don't go to the state for anything, we'll take care of you, you know, with, with everything. So, um, you know, as they started to gather power and started to approach, and then we saw, you know, the church all through the Middle Ages up through the Renaissance, you know, had significant powers. But, so the whole church versus state issue. I guess maybe the other thing was that, hey, women have been doing remarkable things all through history and we just don't hear about it. And that's one of the things that I most wanted to say in this book, was that, yes, there were women physicians. There were women philosophers, there were women mathematicians, and more than one. But we don't hear about them. It's very interesting. Right at this time period, we have a whole bunch of very powerful, interesting women. Gallus Placidia ruled the Western Roman Empire. Her niece, Pulcheria, ruled the Eastern Roman Empire. Um, and she, she basically co-ruled with her brother, Theodosius. And Theodosius, at the time of this book, is just a boy. He's just like nine or something like that. And Pulcheria, who is at the tender age of 15, she is going to declare herself her brother's regent and Augusta, the ruler of all the Eastern Empire. At the age of 15, she does it and she makes it stick. <laughs>